England continue the hunt for a first major trophy in 58 years uh, against the Swiss tomorrow live on Talksport. Gareth's side haven't impressed with performances so far and have Jude Bellingham's 95th minute bicycle kick to thank for still being in the tournament. It led to criticism of the England boss, but defender John Stone says, no, 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 no. The manager doesn't uh, let outside noise affect his side. Yeah, no, it brushes it aside. I think I can only comment on that is um, how um, how that'll only affect him in a, in, a, in a good way. You know, it'll make him want to win even more, do even better. But yeah, no, it gets brushed brushed, uh, brushed aside quite quickly. Just see the big questions. Are we going to see with the real England? Is there going to be many changes? And what system are they going to play? Adrian Durham joins us now from Germany. Adrian, good morning. Morning, night. Morning, Alan. Morning, Ray. Uh, Adrian, are you nervous or excited? Um, probably just excited, to be honest with you, because I literally can't believe that England are still in because they've <laughs> been so bad. They were so terrible against Slovakia. Um, Slovakia truly deserved to go through. So actually, I think a lot of England fans are just enjoying the ride because they really don't deserve to be here. But you never know what's around the corner. All of a sudden, things could click with a change in formation. Players could suddenly gel better, blend together well and start playing well, and all of a sudden we might look like a side that's going to win the Euros. But up till now, we haven't looked like that. So I'm not nervous. I'm just, I feel lucky and blessed to still be here. Is it time now Luke Shaw comes in on the left-hand side? Look, they put him in a squad, uh, Aid, he's been training. Now they've got to take a chance probably on Luke Shaw on that left-hand side. Seriously, though, he hasn't played since February. Yeah. You're going to pitch him in. You're going to pitch him into a, a quarter-final of a European Championships to start... Uh, you know, I, I don't think just I've been speaking to quite a few coaches, uh, you know, back home about whether they would actually take that chance with somebody who hasn't played since February in a crucial game. And none of them would do. Most seem to think that Luke Shaw won't kick a ball, maybe as a late sub, possibly. But then you risk him breaking down. What's so, the point in and put him in the squad? I don't get that bit, Aid. Well, the original plan was that he was going to be fit for, I think, the second group game, possibly the third group game. And, oh, right. and then at that point, you're thinking he can get some minutes. So with a 26-man squad, I don't think it's the worst decision Gareth Southgate's ever made, but it's one that could easily be questioned, you're right. Adrian, any, any sort of, are you in any sort of rumours at all that there's a little bit of unrest in the squad or has that been totally squashed by the PR department? Um, I think the PR department are trying to squash it. There are still persistent rumours that all is not well within the squad. But here's my view on that. It's a 26-man squad. They're away for at least a month. There's going to be things that go wrong within the camp, right? You'll have been in this situation, mm. pre-season tours, whatever, you know, away with England as well. I think there's going to be situations where sometimes not everybody gets on and maybe that's blown out of proportion. My view on that is that it should not stop England playing well together on the pitch, whether they get on well or not, off the pitch, shouldn't really matter. What, well, is, what is coming for a, a player who's played every game? What do you mean? Uh, who's who's complaining about the squad, who's complaining about um, problems in the squad? Listen, I, I mean, there are Euros. These are professionals. These are well-paid individuals. What on earth could the problem be? I mean, just get on and play football. and mm. and Because they're going to look like an idiot. If they're the ones, if there's one individual causing a problem, they're going to look like an idiot at the end of the tournament. If England go out and lose 3-4-0 this weekend, they're going to look like fools when it all comes out. And believe me, it will all come out. Yeah. Hey, what's, what's the atmosphere like around the England um, fans? Because they, they must be delighted that they got through because I thought they was out. That last-minute goal from Bellingham. You know, what, how, how are they feeling? Come on, change it, do something. You know, what's the atmosphere like with the English fans? Well, they're just, they've resigned. I mean, it's, it's almost like... They, they can't believe, a bit like I was just saying, that yeah. they can't believe they're still here. So they're just having a great time and enjoying the ride while we hold on, literally hold on for dear life in this tournament. The great thing for the England fans is they've, a lot of them have based themselves in Dusseldorf, which is where this quarterfinal is going to be played against Switzerland. And it's a great city. It's a fantastic, buzzing, lively city. So they're actually having a really good time. We've come away from Dusseldorf right now. Um, we're in Stuttgart for the Spain-Germany game later. But the England fans, I think, are loving it. And they're, they're basically laughing because they can't believe they're still here. Well, you know, the, the other thing, I, I think if I was in the dressing room, I'd be talking about it. I'd say, guys, we're not playing France. We're not playing Germany. We're not playing Spain. With the greatest respect, 
to them, but we're playing Switzerland, who I don't think we've lost since '82. And he's still got the Netherlands as well. If you, you get through that, they do get. Uh, they've got every opportunity. What a perfect opportunity! I'd be driving the positives into my players, not they're a good side, they're well organised. Forget <laughs> Switzerland, just get England going. Yeah, what what Gareth should be saying to them is this lot couldn't even beat Scotland in the group stage. So get yourself. Uh, uh, sorry, we did beat Spain. If you recollect, a few weeks ago. <laughs> Are you okay there, mate? Um, so <laughs> it is a great opportunity, yeah. but only if they start playing well. They've not been playing well. Jude got them out of jail, and then Harry Kane popped in a winner, but that was not a vintage performance. England have been terrible. They just need to start clicking. Something somewhere has got to change. Maybe it will be that change of formation, three at the back, and suddenly things will click. But you're right. If you look at the rankings, England should be beating Switzerland, and that's not arrogance. But then look at how Switzerland have played generally in this tournament, and they look—they do look very organised, but they look effective as well with the front three. Aid and you a cracking game later for you as well. Absolutely, Spain Germany. I mean, they, they actually talked in the press conferences last night about this being the final. Well, I've got news for them: it's not the final. <laughs> these two uh, top scorers—they're in the top two or three of all the lists for the attacking stats at this Euros and they've been absolutely brilliant both of them I picked Germany before the tournament started but Spain have looked absolutely fantastic what I love about Spain is they get the ball wide they get crosses in the box they score goals they're absolutely fantastic it should be hmm. a Euros classic Spain-Germany live on TalkSport tonight well, we hope so Adrian enjoy mate Cheers, thank Ike. you Adrian Durham uh, live from Germany of course TalkSport Breakfast with Alan Brazil Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.